as much as we possibly can. So I just wanted to share the state of what happened last year and, and know that whatever goes on this year, that God is faithful and he's going to be there with us. Amen? I want you to take your Bibles now as we look at a new beginning. I want you to take your Bibles, turn to the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 is where we're going to be reading today. And we're going to be looking at Abram being told what I talked to the kids about to be going to a place that God will show him. So if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and look and let's stand in honor of reading God's word. Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1. And it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done last year. Now, Lord, as we begin and celebrate this new year, the first time that we get to be together at First Baptist West in the new year, Lord, that we can celebrate what you've done in the past. We can celebrate the lives that have been changed. And now we look forward, Lord, to what you're going to be doing in this upcoming year. And Father, I pray that you would be an encouragement to everyone in this room, everyone watching us on the live stream, that Father, that through whatever we're going through today, that God, you would encourage us, you would help us, and Lord, you would guide us. And now I pray that the, these words are not my words, but yours. I pray, Father, that this is not my message, but yours as well. And Lord, I pray that the response will be as you desire for it to be. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. The thought that I want us to have today as we begin this message is the new year brings a freshness. Amen. It's a new start. Man, we get to start over. Everything's fresh. But it also has an uncertainty that lies ahead for us. So whatever is out there, we know that it's a fresh start. We know that the, the, the things from the past, they're gone. We now are starting over a brand new year, but that brings about an uncertainty. And I want to look today what God had mentioned to Abram and about how it affects us in our church, but also in our families and in our lives as individuals. And the first thing that I want us to look at that God was mentioned to him was that he had to leave the familiar things. He had to leave those things which were, were familiar to him. In other words, where, where, where we find our comfort, God wants us to move forward from here. Now, we can sometimes rest on what happened last year and say, "Woo, that was a good year. We like to kind of hang out there for a little while. We want to kind of celebrate and we don't want to move forward. But listen, God told Abram, it's time for you to move out, to leave that where you are comfortable. And my friends, listen to me. I understand that we love our comfort. Amen. We spend a lot of money to make sure we're comfortable. And we like the area of comfort, and we don't like leaving that area of comfort because it's even though that sometimes things are not necessarily good where we were. Case in point, if you'll remember back in the book of Exodus, when Moses came in to lead the children out of Israel, that when they got out and they were slaves there, man, they were being tortured, they were being beaten, they were being starved, and all these things were going on. But they left out and they were going to the land that God had promised them. And you remember that when things got pretty tough and it was, even though they were going with God and even though they had the, the, the cloud before them during the day and the fire before them during the night to realize God's glory, God hadn't left them, God was still there. Man, they had seen the Red Sea parted, they'd seen all these other great things. Every time it got tough, what did they do? They logged back and said, you know what? It would have been better for us if we had stayed in Egypt. At least we had food to eat. At least we had a house to live in. At least we had a place to, and it even got to a point they said, at least we had a place to bury our dead. What they weren't realizing was while they were there, it was an awful place. That's why God got them out of there. Amen. Because it wasn't a good place for them. But they were even looking at, at least we were comfortable. We were familiar. That's where we were. Folks, listen to me. We have to be able to leave today and go where God wants us. And sometimes that's to leave that which is familiar, that which is comfortable. We like staying in what we call a comfort zone. Why do we like a comfort zone? It's comfortable. Amen. 
We don't want to get out. And my friends, listen to me. A new year lies new challenges. And I'm here to tell you, God is going to bring challenges to First Baptist West. Positive challenges. Things for us to do. Things for us to move forward on. And he's going to ask. Now, this, this might blow the whole sermon. I might as well stop after this. But he's going to ask all of us to get out of our comfort zones in 2020. And the silence. Got one. Thank you, Patrick. But God is going to ask us, in order to do what he wants us to do this year, to be all that he wants us to be, to be everything and achieve all that he to reach the people that he wants us to reach, folks, we're going to get out of our comfort zones this year. But many of us are going to go, oh, now, preacher, we ain't never done it that way before. Listen, I don't know what we're going to do this year. I don't have a clue. We're just going to find what God leads, and we're going to follow that. But that's not necessarily even good. So we're, he also is going to places that he didn't know, so we're going to do things that we don't know about. We're going to places here at First Baptist West. You're going to go in places in your family and as individuals. You're going to go into places today that you don't know anything about. You don't know what lies ahead of you. You might say, oh, well, by this time next year, I'm going to. Well, the Bible already tells us, be careful saying stuff like that. What you ought to say is, Lord willing, I'll do this. Because you really don't know what you're going to be doing this time next year. Amen? Hey, you don't know what you're going to be doing this time tomorrow. So we're going to go to places that we don't know. And here's the deal. He had no idea where God was sending him. He said, I want you to go to a place. Where's the place? What is a place? I don't know. Going to a place is not fun, amen? Because we're all destination people. We want to know where we're going. But a place is a broad area. As a matter of fact, when my girls were growing up, they would come to me and they'd say, Dad, we're going to go out tonight. I said, where are you going? Oh, we're just going out. And I'd say, uh, no, you're not. You're not just going out. Out is a big area. Amen? Out covers a lot of ground, and you're not going out. You are going to tell me where you're going. And guess what you're going to do when you get there? You're going to call me and tell me you're there. And guess what you're going to do when you're not there? You're going to call me and tell me when you're coming home. Because I don't want you going out. Because I, as a dad, listen to me, I, as a dad, was scared of out. Amen? I was scared to death of out. Because I wanted to know. That's why we get scared sometimes now when God says in 2020, church, you're going to go up to a place that I'm going to show you. Where, God? Just a place. Be ready to go. So he was sending him to a place he didn't know. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven eight. 8, look at what it says. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was sent out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And listen, I highlighted this part. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went out. Why? Because he had no idea where he was going. Now, we all say, well, we know because we read the ending. Well, he didn't know the ending. Amen? I always warn you a lot of times, man, be careful reading the Bible and some of these stories when great God was doing great things. And I said, a lot of times we'll go, well, David didn't have anything to worry about. We knew he didn't get eaten by the lion or Daniel. And David, got, he killed Goliath. Listen, we know it because we, we, it's past and we read it now. But when Daniel was going to go down in that lion's den, guess what? He didn't know what was going to happen. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going to be thrown into the fire, they didn't know what was going to happen. As a matter of fact, they even said, if God can, will he, he can deliver us. But if not, we'll still not serve you. Folks, they didn't know. Abram didn't know where he was going. So now we need to look at that and say, by faith, guess what? We're going to go this year. Because we don't know where we're going. We don't know what God has for us. But it's not, unless it's faithful. We have no idea what's going to take place between the promises. He told him here that I'll fulfill this. There was going to be a whole lot going on in between there, and he didn't know. 
My friends, listen to me. We entered into a time here at First Baptist West, just, and, and very quickly I want to talk about this. We entered into a time, man, just uh, not quite a year ago, our music minister, Doug, said that, you know, he's retiring, he's moving, and he moved, and we went, whoa, well, what are we going to do? we got to find somebody. Then all of a sudden, top that off, Christine, who played our piano for all these years, she decided, hey, I'm, I've got to move to Oklahoma City, and, and I'm over here going, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? Lord, and, and, here, and I remember this. I'm going to confess something to y'all. See, I hate it when God makes me confess something to y'all. I don't make all y'all say, I wish he'd make all y'all stand up and confess something to me now. No. No, he do, I don't. I don't want to know. All right, I don't want to know. If you need to tell me, okay, but please. Okay, anyway, I'm getting, let me get back. But I was, I was praying one morning, just a week or so ago, and I, I, I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord... If you would today just show me a piece of how this is going to work, boy, I feel a whole lot better. If you'll just show me a piece, show me, I don't need to know a big, I don't need a little picture, just a piece. Okay, I prayed that prayer, and then I went into my devotion time, and listen to what I read in my devotion. Uh, Waiting on God to do something so you can see and then trust is not faith. <laughs> Kick me in the head, amen? As a matter of fact, the Bible even says Jesus was talking to the people and said, you perverse generation, all you want are signs. <laughs> I was part of the perverse generation at that moment. And I began to think, by faith, Abram did. By faith, he went to that place. He didn't have a clue. He didn't have a peace. All he did was he knew God had said it, and he was going to be faithful to God. By faith, he was faithful. Listen, my friends, this year, whatever God has for our church, whatever he has for your family, whatever he has for you, by faith, be faithful to him. By faith, have trust in him. And he has given you a sign. It's not a piece of the puzzle, but his sign was that he sent you Jesus and said, here is your Savior. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You're going to be okay. I have given you a sign. So he went to a place that he had nothing to know nothing about. And then trusting that God is working, trusting that he's going to be out there. The only thing that we know that's ahead of us is God. Amen? I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what to, the future brings to me. But I do know that the one thing is God is already there. God is the God of the future, the present, as well as the past. Whatever lies ahead of me, I may not know it, but God's there and he's not surprised. Amen? Things may be unexpected to me. They may be unexpected by you, but they're not unexpected by God. Not even my mess-ups. Amen? I've never had a day where I really messed up. Well, no, no, okay, I have days that I've really messed up. But they never threw God's plan away. God did not go, whoops, look what he just did. Oh, my God, I wasn't ready for that one. I don't know what I'm going to do now. God never does that. He always is ready. He's out in that future. There's nothing lying ahead of you that God doesn't know about. He doesn't already have worked. Things may be unexpected by us, but not by God. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know. Everything that I'm doing, every plan that I have, every, everything that's coming towards you, I'm in control of, and I have good thoughts towards you. I never have evil thoughts towards you. I only want you to have a future, and I want you to have hope. Everything, there is hope through Jesus Christ. All the future events that we have coming in this year, we can have hope because of Jesus. Then we need to know that God will work for us. Very quickly, I'm going to wrap this thing up. That God will work for us, just as he did Abram. Listen to this point, that no matter what we walk through, God will guide us. No matter what we walk through, God will guide us. I shared with you last week about the 23rd Psalm, 
And we talked briefly about it and how it's not a funeral psalm, even though we've turned it into one. It's a hopeful psalm. It's a, a look back assurance psalm that God will walk through us. And the Bible says in Psalm 23, 4, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. I go through even the most hurtful thing that we can have in this world is a death. And he says, even though I walk through that valley, even though maybe in the future this year, maybe somewhere we're going to walk through that valley, God will not abandon me. He will guide me through it. So no matter where I am, no matter what I'm going through, God's going to guide me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because one, is a, it's a defense mechanism. Other, it's a guide. He'll guide us through whatever's coming our way this year. And we don't have to fear it. And we know that things will be different in December. Let me share this thought with you very quickly. One thing that you do know, listen to me, one thing that we do know is that in our last service of December 2020, things are going to be different than they were this service. In people's lives, in our church, things are not going to be, they, they will. Listen, I'm here to tell you they're not going to be the same. How do I know that? Because even if nothing else happens, we're going to get older. Amen? I start to say I'll get more grayer. I don't know that I can, but things are going, we are not going to, nothing is going to be the same in December as it was in January. Now listen to me. I want to tell you that. That, that, that should scare us to death. Except, except we have Jesus. To somebody who doesn't know Jesus, to realize that the year will bring change to their lives, sometimes major, immense change, will terrify them. But we don't have to be. Why? Because we know who holds the future. And he who holds the future holds my hand. So even though things are going to change, I know the one who's in control. So that ought to bring to us peace in 2020. That ought to bring to us assurance in 2020. That no matter what happens, no matter where he leads me, no matter what he allows to come my way, no matter what he brings in the direction of First Baptist West, no matter where he sends us, no matter what happens in our families, all the change that's going to come, and it will. We're solid because of the rock we're standing on. My friends, that, that thought may scare you to death today. Some of you listening to this program, that may scare you to think, man, what changes are coming. And man, we get, anti we get anxious and we, we, we get nervous and, and we get all wrapped up. And man, we, we, we want to change. We want control. Listen to me. God is in control. And if you rest in him, you're going to be fine. So I want to close with one question, all right? This is the question we're going to, I'm going to close with right here. Do you have that certainty for the new year? Straight up, do you have that certainty for 2020? Do you have Jesus in your heart and in your life? Is he the one guiding you today? Is he the one in control of your life, leading you where he wants you to go, taking care of what he wants to take care of? Do you have that certainty? My friend, if you don't have that certainty today, you need Jesus right now. And you can have him in your life. He has already given us his son. He died on the cross for you today. All you have to do is confess him. You have to believe in him. You have to, to, to confess your sins, turn it over to him. And as I shared with that young lady, switch places with Jesus. You become his righteousness and he becomes your sin. That brings you that certainty. I want to encourage you, don't go through this year without Jesus. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. But I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Maybe you're here today as a, and you have Christ in your life, but you've, you've, you've begun to focus on other things in your life. And Christ is no longer in the center. But today, you say, Pastor, I, I don't want to be afraid of what's out there. And I know, man, I've, I've fallen short. And I'm, I've been having my own struggles. But I want to encourage you today. Man, God is still in control. And he wants to bring you home. He wants to give you that certainty in your life. 
He wants to give you that peace that no matter what's going on, you can have him today. All you have to do, whether you're here in this room or watching this program, all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. And I close with this. Do you have the certainty for this new year? Trust in Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, for, for the past year that you've given us. And I now thank you for whatever is going to be coming this year. Lord, I know you're in control. And I just pray, Father, that you would continue to guide us and strengthen us as a church and as families and as individuals. And Lord, I pray that if there's someone here, as I look across this congregation, Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as their Savior, that today, God, they would call on your name to receive you into their lives. That, Father, they could, they could know that certainty of their future rests in your hands now. Their eternity is secure in your hands. So, Father, I pray today that you would call their names and, Lord, they would answer you. My friends, you can do that right here, right now. Just call upon the name of Jesus. Would you come? Father, I pray for those that know you. But Lord, maybe they've, they've, their attention has been diverted. Maybe, Lord, they've, they've gotten on to other things in their lives, Lord. Maybe they've begun, become the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter. And, Lord, their lives have taken a turn, Lord, that they weren't even expecting. And maybe they woke up here today and don't even realize how they got to where they are. But, Lord, they know that you're calling them home. God, I pray that you would give them that encouragement today, that they would turn to you. Turn back to you as your children. Come home. Oh, my friends, that's possible for you today. He has not forsaken you or abandoned you. Would you come home? Come home. In just a moment, we're about to enter into a time of praise and worship, man. This is a time for us to celebrate Jesus, but it's also a time for us to make a decision. So if today, if you need to come, would you come today? Would you come this morning? Or right there at your seat or right there in your house, wherever you are, would you come this morning? As we enter into this time of praise and worship, the altars are open. But man, you lift up this to Jesus today. Father, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand and would you join back into me with me at praise and worship. Hi, I'm Harold Gacious, pastor of First Baptist West. And I want to once again thank you uh, for joining us this morning in our worship time. And as always, hope that God was able to uh, speak to you during our time and that you were able to enjoy our worship time with us. I would like to invite you to join us throughout the month of January as we will continue to be looking at a series called A New Beginning where we're going to be looking at what God has in store for us as individuals and as a church, and we would like to have you join us then. A quick update on some things is that on January 19th, we will be having a special service where we're going to be observing a sanctity of human life, where we're going to be celebrating life and how we are to protect the life. And so we hope that you'll come and be a part of that time with us. As always, we want to enjoy, uh, invite you to come and join us here live in person at First Baptist West, but if not, continue to join us here uh, on our live stream. But we just want to be a church that reaches out. And if there's anything that we can do to help you, please contact us here at First Baptist West and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. But remember, First Baptist West is a place where we love God, love people, and we really want to see lives change.